Ah, oh, there you are. Hello. Let me just adjust this as per usual. Get it at the right uh, angle. The angle of the dangle. What's that? I can't. I don't know how that rhyme ends. The angle of the dangle. Someone will know that rhyme. Now we need to go a little higher. Yeah, we need to go higher. Ugh. How's that? Hi, hello. Just quickly have a look then and see who's here. I saw Heather and Katty are here already. So Katty is Katty? Katty, I think. Um, happy birthday yesterday to Katty. And we have Heather, big hugs to Heather. Mwah. Love you lots. And Sue says hi. Barry's here. Hi, Bazza. It's been a while since I've done one of these. And we've got Paul here. Dan Spanos is here. Hello, Dan. Dan the man. Dan the speedy man. JC Russell. And John is here. John Snow says evening, folks. And uh, oh, Sue, so, <laughs> that's our suit. Sue, I never recognise you on YouTube. I never realised it's actually you, Sue Poo. Hello, Sue Poo. We had a lovely chat today. And we are sentients here as well. I know. Oh, um, okay. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, I've got some news, but you can probably guess what that is from the thumbnail title, etc. Um, yes, uh, Sven Pritzkalate, the owner and perfumer of SP Parfums, emailed me today and said that sadly he's having to close down his business mid-December so on the 16th of December I think is I'm not sure if that's last orders but by the 17th of December there will be no more website the website is gonna poof disappear so I bought all my SP Parfums I've got a, a box of them here and I thought we could just have a little sniff along with uh, some of these I won't go through all of them because there's a lot and also I'm going out later. So this is a quickie. I know you guys don't mind a quickie every now and then, as long as it's satisfying. So this is just a quickie. And there's a few people here. I feel like um, perhaps we've been missing live streams because this is quite a lot of people for uh, the short time I've been here. So thank you all for joining. If you haven't already said hello, please do so. And uh, let's see who else is here. DK Albright's here, hi DK. Matt off of Pocket Sense. Hello, Matt. Thanks for popping in. Just dropped in for a bit. Well, that was very presumptuous of you, Matt. And we have Lily. Lily says, good evening. Beautiful. And everyone. Oh, thank you very much. Good evening to you. And who else have we got? I think that's everyone for now that has signed in. Or oh, I'm scrolling. Hang on. Oh, Drill Bit's here. Hey, Drill Bit. Um... Yeah, it is a shame, Matt. Uh, I think that's, that is uh, certainly part of it uh, from what Sven told me in his email. It's uh, obviously having a dire effect, as you'll know, um, on all businesses, I guess, at the moment, particularly non-essential stuff. So, yes, um, we'll get into that in a little bit more. Uh, drink of the night. I've just made myself a gin and bitter lemon. Gin and diet bitter lemon in there. So... Cheers, everyone. Friday night, Friday. Mm. So Nigel will have a live on later on tonight, so don't worry. This will be a quickie, but Nigel, Nigel has good longevity. I think he might be popping them little blue pills before he starts. Jon Snow, what time is Nigel's live on? You can tell everyone, because I understand you're making an appearance, so let everyone know. Uh, Barry, is he selling his stock off? His stock is available on his website. He's hoping to sell, obviously he's hoping to sell as much as possible, but he's not knocking down the prices. I'm guessing there's no need or, or he might have a backup plan. I'm not really sure, but he is, uh, the website's up and running, but it's not on, it, as far as I'm aware, he didn't mention any sales. He's got his usual deals going on um, and there's, you can buy, free travel sizes for 98 euros and he does worldwide shipping for free um chat disconnected i don't know if, if your chat's disconnected everyone but mine just has let's refresh it 
um, yeah, he has a, it's a quite a good deal that he has with um, the travel sizes because you could then, it's an easier risk to take if you haven't tried them because um, yeah, you can get three seven and a half meals for 98 euros. Not cheap, but they are, well, I think they're, they're good. I like, well, I certainly, I really love the ones that I really love, but they're, they're all good. They're all, um, very well-crafted, artistic fragrances that actually last really well on the skin and have always have development as well, which I love. Uh, so Dan Spanos says it's only 1.47 in the afternoon where he is. So no doubt your nose is to the grind then, Dan. Um, oh, Scotty is here. I see someone saying hi to Scott. I can't actually see Scott's comment for some reason. Uh, that Oh, it's gone into top chat again. So let's see if I can make it do live chat. Sorry about this. I wish there was a way I could read the comments, but when they come up on the screen... They're too quick, and if that, that means I'm looking down all the time, and I, I'm conscious of that. I don't like doing that. Um, ah, so catty has got bubbly. Cheers, Catty. And, oh, Scott, there he is, Scotty boy. Says, hey, Claire. Uh, John Snow is going to hit the hard liquor soon. You're going to need it, aren't you, Johnny boy? Are you actually going to show your face, John? Or are you going to sort of put something else on the screen, like a cow or something? Um, I think, so Dan's comment about it being 147 is that he hasn't got a drink. But you don't drink anyway, do you, Dan, if I remember? Um, uh, so uh, Nigel's live is at 10 p.m. So if you guys haven't already subscribed to Nigel, your two cents worth, I think it's, is it your two cents worth? I think it's your two cents worth. Uh, then go and, and subscribe and then you can watch a late night, Friday night live at 10 p.m. Uh, Katrine's here. Hello, Katrine. And I'm having trouble keeping up with your comments, so I do apologise. Lizzie, Lizzie Bean, driving home currently, watching silently. Claire, looking amazing, giving me Alice vibes in light blue. Oh, thank you very much, Lizzie Bean. I got your samples today. I meant to message you. I've, I don't know what I've been doing today, but not what I should have been doing. Um, but thank you, Lizzie Bean. So many, oh, I actually had all four. Obviously, I didn't touch the mystery, uh, but I had all four on my arms. I started off with two. And then I put another two on. I'll, I'll tell you later what I think. But they were two violet fragrances, a rose, and what was the other one? Oh, I can't remember. It's gone. My mind's gone blank. Um, oh, Johnny boy's just going to do audio. He's going to he's going to hide his face. Fair enough, John. Two cents worth. It's not your two cents worth. It's just two cents worth uh, to find Nigel and to. Um, he does a live pretty much every other Friday night, and they're really fun, very interactive. He does quizzes. I don't always catch them because I usually sort of end up doing stuff, but they are good. I've seen a few, um, and he leaves them up anyway, so you can always catch them later. Um, Matt almost forgot about John's big appearance tonight. Oh, there's a deal. Mm. Um, Dan, um, no, doesn't drink. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Um, right, okay, I'm caught up. So, I think I'm caught up. So, let's get on with it because we've got a lot of frags. I probably won't sniff them all, as I said, but... Um, yeah, so unfortunately, uh, the website will be closing down uh, about the 16th of December, and then that will be it. You won't be able to get any more SP Parfums. So I'm going to go through some of these quickly and just discuss them with you. Some of my favourites and some of my non, you know, not so favourites. You can't love everything, and there's certainly a few here that I really don't get on with as well but they might suit your taste. So I've started with a really strong one, which is probably not a good idea. That's the thing with these. Pretty much all of them are big. They're quite big fragrances. And this one here, Suntan Glam, this is a fragrance that actually got me into or interested in SP Parfums because I started hearing about it. I think it might have been Max Huesler over on Max, it used to be called Maximilian Must Know. I think he's changed his channel name slightly.
but I think it was him who talked about this, or the first person I saw talk about suntan glam, and I loved the sound of it. We're going back a few years now. Got hair on my face. Going back a few years, I loved the sound of it. So it's like a sunscreen vibe, but with some sexy, kind of like slightly animalic nuances. So to me, it's quite a smoky fragrance, and it, I've always described it like this, and I will continue to do so. It's like you've spent the whole day in the sun with your lover, and you're covered in a, a suntan oil, you know, a very floral, um, white floral oil, like a monoi smelling oil. You know what I'm talking about, monoi, ylang ylang, frangipani, white floral, very exotic, a little bit coconutty, but you kind of like hot and sweaty, but not actually BO sweaty, just that natural skin musk kind of scent. And you perhaps um, indulge in some outdoor pursuits in the sand dunes. So it's kind of sexy, human, skin-like. It's also smoky, so perhaps there's a little bonfire going off, you know, in the distance. It's not mega smoky, but it's got this smoky element. I've always felt like, I can't remember if there's benzoin in here, I've always felt like there's a, a sort of a benzoin-like vanilla-esque element to it as well. I'm not going to dwell too long on, if, on the singular fragrances because it's going to take too long, but I really, really love that. If you like a beachy style scent but you wanted something a bit more elevated, a little bit more, a little bit louder, it's a very big fragrance, it's very, very strong. Extract, and it, really, it behaves like a, a, one of the beastly extracts. Some extracts stay really close to the skin. This doesn't do that. This is, this is like supercharged perfume. So it's very loud, one or two sprays, that's all I would do. It, even though it reminds you of summer, it's so heavy that you might rather wear it in the colder weather and then it will just remind you of the summer. But if you actually wore that on a hot sweltering day, it might be a little much, it might be a bit cloying. But I really love that one. So that's Suntan Glam, highly recommend for beachy type fragrance lovers, white floral lovers who want something extra, a bit of incense and um, a bit of sex. So there's a quick check on your comments. I'm not going to be able to read all of these comments, I don't think, so do apologise, but it's just time constraints. Um, okay, uh, We Are Sentience is going to get the Christmas set, I think. Delirious Iris is super great. Yes, I've got that one here. We can do that one now if you like. Um, so I've got that one there. Um, I've yet to try that Iris. Sue Poo, I can make that happen. But don't do remind me because I'm, I'm terrible at sending samples. I promise and I don't deliver. So it's just, I don't know what it is. Laziness, basically. Um, uh, Katrin's never smelled anything SP, unfortunately. Neither's DK. Um, well, he does samples. He does the travel sizes. There's lots of different options. Have a look at the website. I should have linked it earlier, but um, it's not hard to find. Uh, Scorpio, 8 Pisces. Hi, Claire from Colorado. I'll try and get another of his fragrances before they're gone. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't know what he's, what he's got, what he's got left, if he's likely to run out of anything. I don't know. But yeah, I guess if there's something you've got your eye on or you want to get a backup bottle, then now is the time. Um, DK Albright's got a, such a long list of to try that I will be by 100 by then. Yeah, I know what you mean. I, I get that. Uh, uh, <laughs> Drillbit says, uh, me likey likey hot and sweaty. Yeah, I bet you do, Drillbit. In the, uh, in the saddle, perhaps. <laughs> Uh, DK or by Animalic Skank, I prefer. Okay. Um, uh, my pear pie. Oh, lovely. Thank you, DK. I look forward to that. Right, so then let's smell Delirious Iris. This one to me, I haven't smelt it in quite a while actually. It's a, another very bombastic scent. It's very loud. Um, it's not, if you I was expecting, now when you have Iris in the title of a fragrance or when you know a fragrance is all about Iris, you expect it to be very soft and fluffy and light, maybe just a little bit woodsy, uh, usually powdery, could come off like mixed um, makeup powder or lipstick. 
And I don't really get that with this. To me, this is, it's like, for me, it's like a woodworking shop with so much wood, so much wood, all the different woods. It's really woody. And what I'm telling you is it's really woody, but it's also got, it's got a violety aspect to it. It's got kind of like a, sh a sharp violetish element to it. Really, really woody. Something, I think there's a boozy note in here. From memory, there's a rum or whiskey or something, I think, in here a little bit. Um, yeah, but we are sentient, says boozy iris, yes. And to me, it's, it, the iris isn't the main player. The woods are the main player. The iris kind of sitting underneath and just giving that like fuzzy irisy thing. But this is not a soft iris scent. This is not the, the powder and makeup scent. This is for someone who likes a bigger fragrance, something a little, a little bit more a pizzazz. This is a huge fragrance. It's not quite my style. It's just a bit too big. It's, it's too woody and too big, believe it or not. Um, I like it. I would prefer this on someone else. It's, it's a bit overwhelming. I'm sure it settles, but it's a little bit overwhelming. I would prefer it on someone else. It would even make a really beautiful uh, room scent, you know, like a candle or something. So that one is Delirious Iris. Okay, so we've got 33 people watching. If you are watching and you haven't signed in yet, now you might not know this, but there's health and safety rules with this channel and these live streams because they can get very dangerous. So if you are watching and you haven't given me a sign that you're here, then you need to do so now. And you can do that by just uh, sending an emoji. If you don't feel comfortable saying words, you can just send an emoji or, um, or just uh, a couple of words just to say you're here, just so that we know to look out for you should there be some sort of disaster. Tina's here, hi Tina. DK Albright says, too big, is there such a thing? Well, I don't actually know, DK. I think that's a discussion for another video, maybe. <laughs> right, then let's move on to another fragrance. Jimbo's here, hi Jimbo. And we're just gonna randomly pick them out now rather than worry too much. I'm actually wearing this one, uh, it's Musk. Musk, SP Musk. Uh, oh no, this is Musk 2. I'm not wearing this one. This is oh, Musk 2. We should probably talk about Musk first then uh, because Musk 2 is a flanker. So Musk I'm wearing here and this has Hawthorn in it which is kind of green and sweet at the same time. Also known as Acacia. It's got Jasmine Sandback. But it's like um, the Jasmine in here is, is almost like a... Um, psychedelic, futuristic jasmine, kind of like what Alien did with jasmine. Not the same jasmine as Alien, but you know how Alien jasmine doesn't smell like a natural jasmine. You don't feel like you're walking down, a, you know, a Mediterranean side street with jasmine overflowing into the road. No, the jasmine is like hyper crazy jasmine. And this is a, a, another variation on jasmine that's not like a natural jasmine bush, it's kind of futuristic. I can't remember what else is in here, but it's a, a smooth, a slightly green, a slightly sweet smell, almost like the smell of fresh grass with dew on top. And it's almost a tiny bit honeyed as well. It's really, really beautiful and completely unisex. Despite the jasmine notes, I know some guys don't like to wear florals. It doesn't really smell exactly like a floral fragrance. It smells more like a sweet green, kind of grassy, but not just pure grass. An interesting, and it's a moist fragrance. We like it moist, don't we? I don't know if there's a bit of hay in here or something, giving it almost like a coumarin, uh, maybe there's some tonka. I'm not, I can't remember the notes. It's been a while since I talked about this one. But it's a good one. Um, if, I, if I was only allowed to buy three fragrances, then I would definitely be getting musk. So that's musk. That's the original musk. I've got something in my eye or, or stuck on my lashes right in front of my eye. Almost certainly is going to be a sweetie hair. I'll try and ignore it. So we're going to go into Musk 2. 
So we have Brandon in the building. Hi, Brandon. Uh, Jimbo's wearing Haraiku Lovers Pop Electric G. Um, don't know that one. Sounds interesting. Uh, DK Albright, every time I get a live from Claire, I'm cleaning. My scent of the day is sweat. Can't you spray something over the top? <laughs> spray something really heavy. Uh, needs a shower. Uh, Jimbo, it's been so long since the live, a uh, Claire live. I feel giddy. Oh, bless you. It's so good to see you, Jimbo. Uh, John says, if, if that's the one you, I tried from you, mate, then it's lovely. Oh, is that the musk? Um, possibly. I can't remember what I've sent people. <laughs> um, ah, we are sentients wearing embers on one arm and wafts on the other. Wafts from the loft, I take it, the EDP. Mm. Good stuff. What do, you, what do you make of embers? You probably know it's my favourite. Okay. Uh, Christy's wearing solstice scent saffron. And we're going to spray this musk too, if I can find it. Oh, we just had it, didn't I? Here it is. So this is uh, similar to musk, but there's some extra, I say extra, there's animalic notes in here. I think it's castorium. Um, it's the, the same note that's in kuros. So if you're familiar with the note in kuros, the one that smells a bit like a urinal cake. Now I just said cake, so I'm expecting Tony to pop up any moment. Uh, if the note in Kuros that smells a bit like urinal cake, I believe that it's castorium. Uh, I understand that can also smell leathery, but in Kuros it smells like, it does smell, I don't know if I really know what a urinal cake smells like because I don't go into men's urinals anymore and it's been a while. So, but I do know what it's like to walk past a particularly stinky wee wee smelling men's toilet. I'm not saying that it's just men's toilets, but I think it's the, the nature of your ceramic, the ceramic furniture that you have, I feel like that lends itself to stinking a bit more, whereas us ladies obviously flush away everything, hopefully. Um, we didn't need to get into that much detail, did we? Musk 2 is, it retains the beauty of the original musk. It feels like it has all of the elements but on top, you have this slightly naughty, animalic element of kind. It's, it's not exactly urinal, um, but it is almost. It's almost pissy. Pissy, but kind of sharp and fresh. But it's not. Nothing's too sharp, though. If you like things that are a little bit more animalic, then musk too, animalic-ish but not too much. I could wear this. And in actual fact, I have a memory now of um, trying this out on one wrist, went for a walk, randomly bumped into one of my best friends who was out, um, she had just finished working in a house. And uh, I got her to smell it and she really liked it. And I was expecting her to recoil because obviously I know there's an animalic note in there. I mean, she really enjoyed it. So once the, I think once the top dries off, you actually lose some of the animalicness anyway. And it's a little more mass appealing than you might expect. So musk too, I could happily wear that. I would probably, if I was going out, I would spray it for about, about half an hour before I left the house, just to let it settle and let the, let the animalic maybe dissipate a little bit. So that's musk too. Um, E, oh, that's Alicia, isn't it? E 2018. That's Alicia, I'm pretty sure it is. Wearing a few scents of the day. The most prominent one is Arsenic by Sugar and Spite. Actually, it's a cross between Suntan Glam and Astrid Perfume Embers. Okay, obviously I know Suntan Glam, but I don't know the other one. Sounds great though. Uh, DK says, the way you say urinal compared to the American way sounds classier. How does, how does the American say? You're, you're urinal? Oh, you say urinal? Is that right? Urinal? Um, Gilbert says, Claire, you're starting to crack me up. Urinal? <laughs> I'll try and say urinal now. Um, maybe we don't need to say urinal anymore. Uh, let's just move on. And we've got pink patchouli. This is another really good, this is one of the more popular ones. Yana over at cha cha the channel, Tom Elise, 
is a massive fan of this. She's a big patchouli fan anyway, which will help. But this is a patchouli for people who don't usually get on with patchouli because I quite like this. In fact, I really like this. Sven has this amazing patchouli. I do not know what it is. He calls it aged patchouli. It's in, actually, I think it's in the musk. It's in the musk. And what else is it in? I think it's, the, it's musk that it's in, I, that gives it this dry dustiness. And of course it, it's in here, pink patchouli. And it's a really pretty pink floral scent sitting on this patchouli note. That right now the patchouli is a little, a little smoother and more syrupy, but I think when it dries down, it gets dusty and earthy, but not like, 60s hippie you know straight up patchouli oil it's more of a dusty the kind of patchouli i quite like so yeah it's kind of like a it's just a sweet pink floral i can't remember the flowers in here might be peony i'm not sure um could be sort of rose peony could even be a touch of pink berries a little tiny hint of fruitiness but it's a really nice one, a patchouli that even a patchouli hater might like. So pink patchouli, very popular. Um, quite a few people really rate that one. So we'll pop that one down. Uh, so uh, CK's here, says scent of the day is Kemi Aurum. And John says he's wearing flower of immortality that's never gone away with back to black of it. Um, I don't know what that means. So you're wearing two different frags there, John. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, Rahul's here. Uh, hi, Claire. Hope you're well. Hope all is well. Regards to Rahul, the fragrance reviewer. Thanks, Rahul. That's the cat just coming in the cat flap. Hey, sweetie. Can you hear her? Sweetie. And... Uh, Hilary's here. Hey Hills, nice to see you. Um, right then. And Heather's used up a sample of Gomon Kakan. Beautiful, how do you feel about that one Heather? I really like that. Not to the point I need to buy it, but it's a really gorgeous, rich, dark chocolate with a little bit of booziness from memory. Yarn is here, these are very sad news. I have no idea how we would live without pink patchouli and other stunning SP parfums, huge loss to our community. Yeah, it really is. Um, it's really sad, Yana. I was talking about you earlier and, and what you like and stuff, and pink patchouli being one in particular that you really love. Um, it would be sad to lose powder and dust, Alicia says. Absolutely. Um, oh, that's my favourite of all of them. It's, in fact, it's probably in my top five favourite fragrances in the world. In the world. Um, right, so let's just keep going because there's quite a few here. Poudre, there is. Poudre. How do we say poudre? Some people say poudre. I don't think that's correct. I think it's poudre. Any French speakers? Is it poudre or poudre? Poudre. I think it's poudre. Urinal. Uh, poudre, there is. I like this one. I prefer this one when it's had a little bit of time to settle down. It starts off very floral. Um, very, very floral. Um, Yana says, I'll need to buy the formula of powder and dust. Yeah, <laughs> and you can make it, that'd be great. Um, maybe we can get Victor Wong to make it and what animal would powder and dust be if, if we, we just randomly made a, a, a zoologist animal, powder and dust? Could, well, we've already got a bumblebee, um, what else could it be? Anyway, I'm going off on a rather a tangent. And congrats to Yana on 13,000, says John. Well done, Yana. That's brilliant. Um, and Yana's going to do a goodbye video next week. And well, hopefully you'll stay in touch with uh, some of us. But he's very shy. He's not, he doesn't do social media. He's a very humble, quiet person. Very kind, very sweet. Um, but we hopefully will stay in touch over email. So, poudre de riz. 
is a floral, it's like a yellow and white floral kind of combination. I can't remember the flowers, but it has this spring meadow floral feel. Clean, clean florals. And then as it dries down, you get that gorgeous uh, rice powder kind of thing with a little bit of vanilla, very soft and lovely. The dry down is stunning of Poutre de Riz. And the top florals, very spring, summery, kind of fresh, bright, yellowy, white florals. Very clean scent. It reminds me a little bit of another one here. So we'll move straight to the next one, which is Sun Milk Flowers. So Poutre de Riz is that one. The dry down on that is really beautiful if you like makeup, powdery, slightly sweet kind of scents. But um, this one reminds me a little bit of sun milk flowers. I feel like the floral notes are similar. Let's spray that one. Um, the sun milk flowers doesn't dry down to uh, powdery stuff like Poutre de Riz does. Um, this is much more focused on the florals and it's called sun milk flowers and it does kind of have a little bit of a milkiness as well. Yeah, it's almost like smelling, it's like you're in a meadow and you smell, actually smelling daisies and daffodils and grass, so it's green and floral. Uh, Yana says, thanks Claire for your kind words. I have a couple of videos with Sven, just in case someone wants to get an idea of him. Very humble and talented guy, absolutely. Um, oh, John says, chrysalis for zoologist powder and dust. Great idea, yeah. Um, Jillbit says, are you going for a knees up with your man, Claire? Um, I think we'll probably just, well, I am going to go and visit him, so we'll probably have uh, a few drinks. Knees up, not so much, um, but we might watch a bit of The Crown. Because <laughs> it's, part, you know, wild rock and roll um, party time. Um, or we'll listen to some music, maybe, but yeah, knees up, not so much. Well, you know, maybe later. <laughs> um, sun milk flowers, it does, it feels like it has some flowers, some of the flowery elements in common with that um, Poudre de Riz. But this one, it does have a different feel to it. When it. And when it dries down, it doesn't go in that powdery direction. This is a, it's a clean mixture of spring, summer florals. A little bit of sharpness, a little bit of freshness, and a hint of something milky, but it's not like super milky. Very bright and happy scent, that one. Some milk flowers. We need to keep things moving along. Um, Sven has already done perfume for Zoologist Hyrax. I wouldn't want powder and dust to be released by any other brand than Sven or me. I know you're quite egotistic, probably fair. No, I can get that. It's your baby, isn't it? Um, Lizzie says, sad to hear about SP Puff. I'm very lucky to have smelled a few from our Claire. Powder and dust is amazing. Yes, um, it is beautiful. Let me know, Lizzie, if you need to try anything else. Um, Claire, am I on Instagram? Yes, I'm on Instagram as Smurfy Girly. Same as on here. Heather, I think I have powder and dust in the drawer. Get it out. <laughs> Get it out, Heather. Have a sniff. And let's smell some more. Let's uh, how are we doing for time? I can't see the time. Oh, I've got something in my eye, like it's, oh, it's a sweetie here. Nope. Nope. So annoying, I can actually see it in my vision. But it's close to my eye, I'm not going to get it out without looking in the mirror. I don't think. Oh, I've moved it. <laughs> Probably made things worse now. Okay, sorry about that little um, interlude. Now, I'm going to talk about one that really didn't work for me at all. I've Oh, bloody thing in my eye. I might have to go and sort my eye out. One second. Uh, talk amongst yourselves, guys. Let's have a look. Oh, bugger, bugger, bugger. I left my microphone on. Okay. 
I possibly sorted it out. I can't. I couldn't find it. I think I've just moved it over to the corner, but that will do for now. So sorry about that. Sweetie hair removal live. Right. So this is one that I just didn't get on with. I have reviewed it, and it's called Cologne. Oh. <laughs> Um, it's the probably the weirdest one of the bunch, in my opinion. Um, what's up, sweetie? What's the matter? Come here. Um, oh, night, Yana. <laughs> Claire leaves us alone like inmates running the asylum. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, okay, Cologne. I can't remember the notes. It is not a cologne in any uh, normal terms that you might expect. It doesn't smell like fresh citruses or petit grain, lavender. Well, there might be lavender. It's just got this weird, creamy, what is that? Not exactly leather. Um, am I going to say it? I don't know if I need to say this. Almost seminal. Um, seminal. <laughs> seminal. Urinal. Um, it's kind of like almost salty. I don't know what it is about this fragrance. I can't get on with it. Um, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> it's... Um, it's strange, creamy, I guess it, there might be a bit of sandalwood or something, creamy, smooth, but just something a little bit weird, almost a strange chemical or something. Um, it makes me think of, now I've actually never been in a photography studio where they have the chemicals and they, um, you know, the old fashioned uh, developing of photos in liquids and stuff. But I imagine that the, all the liquids in the photography studio or the photography, the developing area in the dark room probably have diff, like different chemical smells, all the different chemicals. And I don't know why, but I've always felt like this might smell like the dark room with all the chemicals. Or even a bit like an old TV, one of those old big TVs, you know, it used to have in the 80s. Um, they gave off a particular smell. <laughs> It's just a really weird scent. So uh, it's certainly not a safe blind buy. But if, you, if you're into things that are really weird, you might like cologne. <laughs> yeah, secretion's magnifique. It's not quite as horrendous as that, but um, it, it is bizarre. Um, <laughs> uh, what is labdanum? Labdanum is a resin. I think it's, it comes from the sister's plant or flower but it's like a resin smell when you actually get labdanum if you buy it in its in its natural state or you know ready to be used in perfumery it's a thick brown gooey substance so if you take the lid off it will have a string of goo it looks a little bit like marmite or vegemite or bovril if you know what that looks like and um, the scent is really nice it's it's supposed to be a little bit leathery, but I, I usually get more of a kind of sweet, sticky, how do you describe it? It's a, it's a sweet resin. It's, it's really pleasant. If you know Chypre Palatan from MDCI, that is a beautiful fragrance and a really great way to understand labdanum because once you get to the dry down, uh, or even within sort of half an hour to an hour, you start to smell the labdanum and it gets gooier and stickier and, and lovelier the longer you wear it. So hopefully you'll know that one. But there's lots of labdanum fragrances, but that's for me, that's like reference. Um, okay, let's catch up with you guys. Um, Jill, Jill says, don't start. Uh, love scent is here. Hi, love scent. Nice to see you. Um, what's up, everyone? She says, doing fine. 
Love resin, says DK. I think you'll like it then. Yeah, for sure. Oh, Ultimate Prime. Sorry, Claire. Popped in and out. I don't know about SP. Why are they closing? Hope you're all well. Um, uh, closing, I think he mentioned the current climate. Um, uh, so I, I'm guessing that's a big part, but also he wants to concentrate on, he's, he's looking after his uh, parents, his elderly parents, and obviously it's a, a testing time and he, he's tired and just needs a break. So um, yeah, so I think it's a mixture of lots of things. He's He said he's cried over it, he's um denied over it, he's really thought about it, and then uh, he's decided that it's the best thing for him. Yeah, Heather, a tree sap consistency. Yes, yeah, like a gum, tree sap gum kind of consistency. That's it, yeah. John says it smells of coffins to me, Labdenham. Okay, I don't really, fortunately, I don't know what coffins smell like. Um, I mean, I've been to funerals, but I've never gone up to smell the coffin. But John, you know, if that's what you like to do. Uh, oh, power to you. Heather's got some tiramisu cake. Lovely jubbly. Um, Um, SP is in, he's in Germany. Um, okay then, right, let's keep smelling. Uh, what did we find out what the time was? Does anyone know what the time is? Um, hang on, I started at 6.20 and we're 47 minutes in. So, all right, fine. I'll, I'll carry on for about 20 minutes more. And then, then I must go. So the next one we've got is, uh, oh no, we did SP musk, didn't we? We did SP Musk, part. I don't know why that's still in the basket. And sea salt amber, sea salt amber. This is another one I slightly struggled with, not to the degree of cologne, but um, I remember there being an element that wasn't quite to my taste. So let's see if I can remind myself what that was. So sea salt amber, I know it's got sweet notes, I'll remember that. Yeah, so this is better than I remember. Um, so I'm almost getting like a concrete dust. I love concrete dust, by the way. Um, concrete dust, a little tiny hint of something that's in the cologne, the one that I don't like. There's a little hint of that, but it's not to any strong degree to put me off. It's a little bit leathery. Kind of fresh, outdoorsy. You know, sometimes you open up your cold tap you, and the first scent you get is almost, it's quite mineralic. Uh, just when you turn that cold tap on, you get like this mineral smell and it might be from the water sitting in the iron pipes. I think it picks up a little bit of the iron and you can kind of smell, if your water's been sat in the pipe for a little while, it kind of picks up the scent of the pipes and it's almost a little bit like that. Uh, Heather said I struggled and scrubbed this off. Yeah, I can, I can understand that because it does have um, a kind of weird, does have a little bit of that weird cologne smell that's somewhere between leather and seminal. Um, but it's much more pleasant. If you wait for it, the dry down, you get the sweetness of the amber. And it's got like fresh, um, it wouldn't surprise me if there is a little bit of ambroxin in here, but it's not heavy ambroxin. A little bit of ambroxin. Actually, Lizzie reminds me of Sydney Rockpool a little bit, this one, but less less of the sweetness. There's a kind of like a, an E4 Molto, almost candy floss like thing in um, Sydney Rockpool, plus coconut, which I know is not listed, but I think we all smell it. Um, this doesn't have that. Definitely gets better the longer it's on for. So that's sea salt amber. Um, we are sentient like salt tar better. I might have that here, or it might be, um, Dan might have that one, because when Sven sends us stuff, he sort of always sent it to both of us, and then we kind of like, well, actually I kept most of it. 
Um, there was no custody battle, <laughs> but we're friends, so we share. We still share fragrances, and um, anything I've got, and he wants to borrow, he can, and he's uh, very generous in the way, in that way, with me as well. So um, he might have the sea salt tar because I think that was more him. Um, love that scent. NJ says, "Buy all, gonna fix, uh, fix Christmas gifts. Have a great day or night." Wow, very organised. Love scent. Have a great night. Um, yeah, Lizzie, anything you want to try, just let me know. Um, Seminole Indians, um, not quite. <laughs> um, right, let's have a swiggy, swig, swig, and we'll keep going because we've got a few to get through. And then I'll be doing a video with Dan, we'll do a live stream, or not a live stream, we'll do one of those link up, half and half uh, screen things. And um, we'll probably just do our, we'll go more in depth on our favourites. So um, we'll do that one together. What have we got here? Right then, there's got loads. So these are what the travel sizes look like, seven and a half mils. The sprayer is just as good as on the big bottles. It's a really, they're really great sprayers. So we're gonna do the Christmas cassis. This is an, um, a lovely, uh, it's cassis, it's black currant, isn't it? Is it black currant or, um, I always mix up blackberry and black currant. I think it's black currant for cassis. And um, yes, I've got rose Polaroid, we are sentient, so we'll get to that for sure. Um, Fragrance Phrase says, hi guys, Scotland has signed in. Well done, welcome Scotland. Shalointa, Scotland, says DK. Black currant says Heather. Yes, black currant is cassis. Um, okay, my, that sweetie hair's now itching my eye over here. I should have gotten it out, but. Okay, I really love the juicy fruitiness of this one. But it also has a spiciness and a little bit of a green, like a sharp green tinge, but then black currant does have that kind of like, black currant's another fruit that gets uh, sometimes becomes pissy to some people's nose. I don't think I really pick up on that. Um, but this one does have a slightly spicy green element to it that can almost come off a little bit like a curry-ish note. So the black currant is dominant and it's lovely, fruity, natural smelling um, with this greenery. It's almost like a um, Black, is it black currant or blackberry? I can't work <laughs> the, the fruit, <laughs> it's like the whole, it's like a, the bush of the fruit. So green, the leaves, the twigs, and the fruits as well. But there's just this uh, almost slight hint of something that's a little bit like curry leaves. Um, just make it a little bit more interesting and not, not a particularly safe blind buy if you just love fruity scents. Uh, but you, you don't like anything too challenging. The, the slight curry nuance might cause you problems, but this one's really, it is really lovely. So that one is Christmas Cassis. Uh, let's keep going. Lemon Sorbet and Orange. This is really nice. Have we got any space? Let's go here. We do that on my skin. Uh, really lovely lemon and orange with this creamy element, but it's not like a, it's, it's not, I don't think it's vanillic, or if there is vanilla, it's not a heavy vanilla. There's something else that gives this a lovely creaminess. When we're doing that. Um, uh, black currant in one umbrella for two is stunning. Lizzie, I love that. I absolutely love that one. Uh, really uh, delicious fragrance. DK loves Civet by Zoologist. We are sentient, loves a good smelling bush. Um, Hilary says, I'm a black currant whore. Catty tried Almond Jane Damask today. That one has lovely black currant. Oh, I've not tried that one. Um, Rich Mitch is here. Yes, I'm live, Rich. Finally. <laughs> okay, then. Yeah, so lemon, sorbet, and orange also has something else like a slightly sharp greeny element underneath you've got the, so you've got the citrus fruits 
and this creamy, slightly sweet element and a slightly green sharp element. I wore this one on my holiday to Devon last year and I remember really enjoying it. So it's one of the lighter of, I mean, a lot of these fragrances, as I said earlier, are hard hitters, very heavy, very bombastic scents. This is, this is a lighter option. Um, Lizzie wants one umbrella for two, but it costs trillions. I know it does, yeah. Yeah, if it wasn't so expensive, I would have bought that as well. I've got a sample, I need to retry it. Um, Lisbon Blues. So Lisbon Blues, this was part of... Um, Where's my testing strips? Uh, a collaboration, as was Suntan Glam, uh, part of a collaboration with Miguel Matos. I think Miguel was the creative director, Sven the perfumer. And Lisbon Blues, to me, smells like cannabis. That's not what it, as far as I'm aware, it's not what it's supposed to smell like. But it's um, very green herbal, weed-like smell to me. And I'm getting absolutely overwhelmed because these are such strong fragrances. I might have to end it without going through everything, but I'll try and pick out what I, I think are worth mentioning. Yeah, Devon was last year. Oh no, I went, I did go, I went this year and last year. That's right. Yeah. Um, but I think it was last year that I took the, um, the one I just mentioned. Um, uh, Lizzie, I bought the travel spray quite a bit cheaper. Oh, oh, on the one umbrella for two, Jimbo. DK says, don't forget Trump's building a resort in Kent. Um, is, he, is he behind that, really? Oh dear. Um, okay, um, yeah, Rich Mitch SP is having to close down his business. Uh, current climate being one of the major factors. Um, so yeah, he's closing down on the I think 16th of December, I think is last. I think that's what he said was last, when you can last order. And then on the 17th, the website is just gonna poof, disappear. So um, yeah, he's, he's going. Yeah, this is like sniffing a bag of weed, Lisbon Blues. It's not what it's supposed to smell like. Um, that's what I get, sniffing a bag of weed, Maybe a little bit of, you're wearing a leather jacket, a little hint of leather. That's really all I get. I, I feel like I'm young again and um, someone's skinning up because obviously I wouldn't be doing that. Uh, right, let's move on. Okay, we've already, I've got that in a bigger bottle, so. What have we got here? Fun Fair is another one that he did with Miguel Matos. Uh, this is another one I, I, I kind of struggled with. I should have loved this one. It's a gourmand. It's supposed to be all the smells of all the food at the Fun Fair, like candy floss and toffee apples and caramel and you know all that stuff. Popcorn. I can't remember exactly what it's supposed to be, but you get that. You do. Um. <laughs> But I always found something slightly disturbing in this mix. I don't think I'm picking up on that now, so maybe my nose has changed since I last smelt it. It's, um, yeah, it's like, it's almost like going, I always used to say it was like going to a fun fair, but one that Stephen King had written about, where things go very, very bad. It's got this dark element to it, so you've got this toffee popcorn note and all the lovely sweet smells, but it feels like there's this dark, bad, naughty thing in the whole mix, is there's this undercurrent of fear. How, how do I describe that in scent? I really don't know. I can kind of, I am picking up on it now. Um, something green and earthy i don't really know but it's it's a sweet fragrance it's definitely a gourmand but just know that there's a dark dark forces in here like mold crept in yeah kind of kind of so that's fun fair 
and what else have we got? Oh, this is a really good one. This is one of my favourites. This is the one I'm wearing actually. So I've got this one here. But because I'm so overwhelmed, I'm just going to spray it on the paper because my nose is just full of scent now. Sandal and peony. Sand, so sandalwood and peony is uh, the notes. Uh, but you've also, what you've got in here, I don't think he lists it, but you'll pick up on a vanilla that is, is kind of, um, it's there fairly early on, not immediately. When you first smell it, it's kind of, it's a fresh, really pretty pink, sweet, fruity, red berry kind of, with this liqueur note. There's, um, I always forget the name of the liqueur, liqueur Chantreuse, Chartreuse, Chambol, Chambol. It's a, a liqueur, it's French. It was made by monks a long time ago using about 88 ingredients or something like that. Lots of green herbal type elements, but a sweetness as well. Maybe chartreuse. Um, so it's got this liqueur note, although that doesn't hang on the whole time. It hangs on, on long enough. And a red berry note, peony. Um, but vanilla connects everything. Um, it's not a heavy vanilla. It's not a cupcake vanilla. It's not a. It's not a vanilla that's that's shining. Um, I wonder if I can show you what she's doing. That's my notebook, and she's just. Oh, she's playing with the pen and the string. Um, probably going to get ink all over my floor now. She's definitely got one on her at the moment, haven't you? What are you doing? Right, okay. Okay, back to me. Mm. Okay, sorry about that. Um, well, no, I'm not sorry because I know that you would have you would have enjoyed a little sweetie interlude. Um, uh, but, oh, hi, Peter. Fragrance for you, Peter's here. Benedictine is the only one I know made by monks. It begins with C. It's either shambled or chartreuse or something like that. Um, Jim, Jim says, I wish I could amuse myself as easily as sweetie does. Yeah, she's easily amused, that one. Your sandal and peony, so you've got this vanilla that's not cupcakey, not particularly strong, but it just connects all the dots, keeps everything together. And it's, it's a really beautiful, really well done composition in my opinion. Probably, although it's not my number one favorite, I think it's the best that Sven has done in my, I, that's my opinion. I think he's an absolutely excellent fragrance. Really well done. And I, I love it, that's why I'm wearing it. I do love it, but say my number one. Well, I think you all know what that is anyway. Um, so let's see what else we've got here. Oh, we've got, that's another mask. That's mask two. Um, oh, magnolia. Um, I'm just going to smell it from here. Magnolia is a very green, fresh, crisp, white floral almost like white, uh, uh, so it's magnolia, it's very, it's a creamy, kind of sharp, almost soapy, think pure poison, to me it's, it's that coldness, that very chaste, sterile floral, sort of magnolia, very austere, almost slightly metallic, not exactly like smells like metal, but it's almost got a slightly metallic feel to, that's how cold it is, it's cold as steel, steel magnolias. So that's magnolias, I've got to keep moving. We are nearly there. Ah, summertime, this is a really pretty uh, strawberry. This is another lighter one. Just spray it in the air now. It's a strawberry fragrance, it's a fresh, fun, Frivolous, strawberry. I'm not sure what else was in here. A bit of peach or apple. Oh, it's apple. I think it's apple blossom. 
It does smell a little bit apple-y, but not too much. I don't generally enjoy apple in fragrances, but it's if it's uh, an apple, it's a fresh and translucent. It's not a stewed apple. It's not apple strudel. It's not um, umber and no, no grill. Um, it's a fresh apple, fresh strawberry, bit of citrus, a little bit of freshness, very light. It's a really pretty, fun, frivolous fragrance. It's quite different to most of his offerings. And I think we are nearly there. Oh, Azure Marine. Oh, I don't remember this one. I've run out of paper. This is, I think this is, oh. This is a, it's called Azure Marine. It, of course, it kind of feels aquatic but not in a Bleu de Chanel kind of way. It's got a smooth, clean, almost, it is almost like a blue shower gel in a way, a little bit. I think he's got uh, some amber accord going on in here as well. Obviously a little bit salty, a little bit of sweetness, a little bit almost fruity. I'm not sure if there's a little bit of a fruity element to this. But I really need to keep going, I think. Yeah, so we're gonna finish with my favorite powder and dust. There we go. Luckily, I've got a backup bottle, so I'm not running out, thank God. And I'm wearing this one here. This is stunning, this is absolutely stunning. I've talked about it so much over the years, maybe not so much recently, but I still love this one. It has pear, and as you all know, I think, I love pear. Um, so if you love a good pear, do you, if you, do you like a juicy pear? Then cheers to that. Peter, I reckon you might like a juicy pear. Peter, if you're still here, Fragrance View Peter, when's your new frags coming out? Because you kind of teased us all. When are they coming out? Let us know. So powder and dust has a pear note, but to me it's not a fresh pear. It's also not stewed pear. It's pear drops. <laughs> Cheeky, yes. <laughs> um, uh, DK says, I've had too much to drink. I better refrain from commenting. Jon Snow's more of a peach man himself, he says. Peachy bum, right? <laughs> Rich Mitch says, Peter's making a perfume called Lusty Monk. <laughs> oh my God. Um, and then a flanker called Harry. So Powder and Dust has a note of pear drop, in my opinion. I think the top note or the note of pear is, I don't even know if it's listed, but it smells like melted down pear drops. So if you know those pear drop sweets, which I adore, it's like they're melted down and like big thick syrupy bowl of melted pear drops, which I love. Um, Peter says, depends when my sprayers arrive. I've ordered 10,000 of them from Rome since pay and I've had nothing. They said they would get back to me with delivery day. Oh, wow. Well, fingers crossed everything's okay, Peter. Uh, Amina's here. Hi, hello, Amina. Good to see you. Um, and Peter's planning on launching the Oud one in December if they get delivered in time. Okay, so the Oud one is called Shambo, isn't it? And that's the one with Ensar Oud. So that's exciting. I'm not an Oud person, so that probably won't be for me. But if you're into your Ouds and you are a fan of Ensar Oud, then that's one to be keeping an eye out on Peter's and the Centauri's social media, I guess. Um, right, so Powder and Dust is slightly peppery so you've got this lovely liquid liquidated pear drop you've got a little bit of pepper and it's a you know the really uh, ground pepper um like so if you sprinkle it it will float in the air so it's, it's that sort of pepper white pepper maybe and there's mimosa it's a sort of yellowy floral feel there's a champagne note to me it's not that sparkly or effervescent it's more peppery with this sticky pear drop and I'm guessing there's a little bit of vanilla in here I can't remember what the other notes are I don't care I love it I absolutely love it it's so 
it's rich but it's not overwhelming and I just love it. It's unique. It's completely unique. So good. So that's my favourite. Powder and dust. Absolutely love it. And mm. uh, fragrance reviewer joining your Instagram. Cheers. Um, thank you very much. Um, Amina, powder and dust was tough for me. I think you and I, we had quite opposite feelings about a few of the um, SP Parfums. And right, so I'm gonna have to, I'm really sorry, I'm gonna have to close this down because I need to be get, I need to have something to eat and then get going. Um, so don't forget to join Nigel's live later. It's called Two Cents Worth. Nigel, he's got a live on at 10. John will be there, John Snow. He's not getting his face out, but maybe you get his peachy bum out instead. <laughs> so thank you so very much for joining me. And um, have a look at Sven's website, SP Parfums. Uh, just, I'll put a link in a second into this video. Uh, it's not hard to Google though. So have a look if you're interested in anything. And um, yeah, that's it. Bye, thank you so much everyone. Thank you for joining. See you soon.